Open to Philippians chapter 2. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Philippians chapter 2. We're going to be walking through a few scriptures. It's Thanksgiving week. Thanksgiving week. Man, and you talk about, it's like God puts us in a place to be thankful for things. Listen, if you weren't flood, flooded, you ought to be thankful. Amen. Amen. Uh, if you see what's going on in the rest of the world and you live in America, you ought to be thankful. Amen. If you live in America and you see what's going on in the rest of America, you ought to thank God for Texas. Amen. Amen. Yesterday, I did a, uh, a funeral service for uh, uh, actually a young man and uh, some of his family. here, Miss Barbara, her son, Sambo, you called him. And uh, that was one of the larger funerals I've done in a long time. And to, and to have the report, I got messages last night from people I don't even know. Uh, Tammy, they were calling me and, and sending me messages from the funeral. They, it's like We've never heard anything like that. Well, I'm going to just be honest with you. You're not going to hear stuff like that if you keep hanging out. Well, you're not going to hear stuff like that. <laughs> All right? So you got to kind of get with us. Many of you, you came from a funeral. In other words, you heard me at a funeral and you came here, so I thank you for that. But it is, and I'm not lying, it's one of my life's quests to help people understand eternity. To live in such a way that we, we live well, that we die well, that we understand this life, to get all we can out of it. Uh, Jesus came that we may have life and life more abundantly. When I see the children in this church, I think of about abundantly. God has blessed us and looked after us and poured things on us. Uh, I love my friends. Don't you love friends? Oh, man, those guys from California blessed me so much. Seventeen of them came down here to help us work on the property. And they, they were in tears when they left. I was in tears when they left. I mean, it was just a tremendous relationship. I always think, and sir, you should, coming in from Louisiana, you just reminded me of two great friends, Boudreaux and Thibodeau. <laughs> and Boudreaux and Thibodeau walked into a candy store. And in the very flash of an eye, Thibodeau had done put three candy bars in his pocket. They walked outside, and Thibodeau began to brag to Boudreaux. He said, I'm the best theft there is. Nobody theft like me. And Boudreaux said, I begin to beat you, Thibodeau. Come on back in the store. So he walked back into the candy store, and he looked over at the owner, and he said, I'll take three of them candy bars right there, said Boudreaux. And he took them, Boudreaux, and them there, and he took them, and he ate all three candy bars in front of him. And the owner said, that'll be $3. And Boudreaux said, no, I'm a magician. He said, you're what? He said, I'm a magician. He said, prove you're a magician. He said, abracadabra. Them three candy bars are right there in Thibodeau's pocket. <laughs> are you comfortable? <laughs> Gotta love friends, amen? amen. Gotta love them. It's a week that reminds us that we ought to be all year long thankful and grateful for the lives that we have. Gratefulness changes and colors our world. There are voices that I can hear, and I know exactly who they are. Uh, what's the guy he played on uh, Jurassic Park? Jeff Goldblum? I hear his voice. Change your apartment. Change your world. The other one I love is... Uh, uh, hey, I just had his name right. Christopher Walken. Love Christopher Walken. Love his voice. We need more cowbell. Love listening to Christopher Walken's voice. So I was just thinking about the uh, change the department, change the world, and I thought about, man, if we could change our attitude, we'd change our world. If we just shifted our attitude and made it one of thankfulness and gratefulness. Uh, life, my friend, is 10% what happens to you and 90% of how you respond to it. And God chooses what we go through. We choose how we go through it. So my attitude will determine my judgment. It's going to determine my decisions in life. I saw a bumper sticker once that said, misery is an option. How many know that? You don't have to be miserable. If you shift your attitude, you got to change it. Uh, it, it look, and just because you see somebody who's smiling all the time doesn't mean they're not going through something. Doesn't mean that life has not been. They have sh they changed their attitude in order to have a better life, in order to smile through it and get through it. And I can tell you, as, as, a, as a pastor of two churches and the father of five kids and grandpa of two and all the things that life throws at you, I now have two dogs. I rescued one this week, 
And uh, so all of these things in my life, you know, I, I just kind of add to it. But I keep on smiling because attitude to me is not just something I preach. It's something I got to have. Amen. It's so good to me. And I may not be able to change the world that I see around me, but I can change the world I see the world within me. Philippians 2, 5 says, your attitude, your spirit should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. There's something about the way Jesus, Jesus didn't come to command us. He didn't come to, to beat us up. He said, I want to show you how to do this. And he began to serve others. And, and serving others always, always brings unity. Uh, it, when, you, when you're mean and you don't serve, it always brings disunity. It's that simple. But to serve one another, to be a blessing, and to understand how great it is to be thankful that we get to serve, and that we have been served. Father, I thank you for your word. I ask that you bless it. God, help us to understand that if we shift our attitude, we can change our whole world. In Jesus' name, and everyone shout. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Again. It's not what happens to me that matters, but what's happening in me. That God is more concerned about my character than he is my comfort. And, uh, when I say that, I, I always want to think about, Lord, if I could just get rid of these pews. Because sometimes I look out there and you are so comfortable. I just see comfort all over you. Now, we'll probably keep them for a long time. I understand that. But on the flip side, it's about our character. And God's always working toward our character. Thanksgiving is the aspect of praise that gives thanks to God for what he's done, what he's done for us. Ideally, Thanksgiving should spring from a grateful heart. I, I, I remember when I first got into uh, the things of God, I would, I would pray for my food. You know, you'd, you'd, you got to pray over, you got to bless the food. And then I realized it wasn't praying or blessing the food that was important. It was giving God thanks for my food, that he provided my food. And I think that's an important thing in life, that anything, because uh, if you start just eating or you start doing things in life without giving God thanks for it, then all of a sudden you think you're the one that provided it. And when I understand that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Again, I had a brother-in-law that once used to buy all his groceries, bring them in, set them over the table, give God thanks for it, and then eat them the rest of the month. I disagree with that. I think every meal ought to be thanked God for. Amen? I think that's kind of a cheap way out, kind of pharisaical. But either way, it's not my business. Uh, being grateful, though, is our responsibility. For me to be grateful and to teach that to our children and our children's children to be grateful. 1 Thessalonians 5.18, in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In everything give thanks. Can you give God thanks in the flood? I gave God thanks through the flood. Amen. I'm still giving God thanks. There were things, again, in my house I did not like that my wife, she's not here today, amen, that, that, that uh, she put in the house. I thought, you know, I would love to change that. And now the flood happened. I get to change it. Amen. Things get shifted. Things that happen. So, so you've got to learn to give God thanks in everything that takes place. Amen. It, it's so important. We've we got to be grateful for it. Ephesians 5.20, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Colossians 3.17, and what, well, whoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Now, when I read this, again, put it in context, we're dealing with people who are being persecuted, people who don't have a, a, a place to gather, they're having to secretly gather. They're the first underground church, uh, and, and in so doing, could be persecuted, to, could be thrown in the Colosseum, could be ate by lions or, or disemboweled by wild boars, and yet they're saying, give thanks. People who caught a fish to eat that day that had no provision for the next day said, give thanks. Amen. And we have refrigerators full and storage buildings full. Our lives are so full. And we can still walk around and act scrooged. I don't know if I said that right. Act like a scrooge. There, that's better. You know, here's the thing about being online. I can't remove it. There are people that go to the other campus knowing because I'm not being recorded, I can say whatever I want. Never mind. Don't, don't. Don't just show up because you want to hear me say something I shouldn't. <laughs> Psalm 100. Open your Bible to Psalm 100. One of my favorite psalms. Just so easy to remember. I saw somebody post that they didn't, they didn't believe in God. They thought the Bible was written by man. The Bible was written by man under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. There's 66 books in the Bible. The guy, I was asking a guy the other day, I, I have a, a young lady that... that uh, I, I just care about like as a dad and, and she was looking toward this young man and I had him on the phone. So I asked him, I said, uh, uh, what is it? He, he's, yeah, he's getting a psychology degree. And I thought, oh man, that's cool. 
you know, learning brains and thinking. So I said, yeah, he's a senior. I said, oh, that's really good. It means you ought to be real smart. So then I gave him what she's going through in life, this college, that college, this boyfriend, this. I said, what would you advise her to do? He said, well, I would advise her to live by the Bible. I said, you went four years of college, and you're going to tell me you would advise her to live by the Bible. I said, uh, by the, he said, by the book. I said, which book? Which book you want her to live by? You want her to live by Genesis, uh, Exodus, build, uh, drive, uh, lead, lead a bunch of rebellious people through the wilderness? You want her to leave through Genesis, build a big boat? Uh, what, what? Song of Solomon? Never mind. <laughs> Which book? And then I said, how about Matthew 6, 33? Seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added. And the guy said, yeah, that's a good one. I thought, okay, I didn't go to get a, never mind. Shout joyfully to the Lord. I love this. All the earth. Not just some, not just the church, but all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful singing. Now, when I say serve the Lord with gladness, know this. When you serve others, you're serving God. When you're working a job, you're serving God. Whatever you do, you're doing with all your might. That's what we just read. Know that the Lord himself is God. It is he who made us and not we ourselves. Again, somebody I, 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 that I know made this statement. That he didn't believe in God, didn't believe in the Bible. And because of that, he, all of it is a fable. And then I read this. And the truth of the matter is, if you don't believe in the book, you're probably never going to believe in God. So the book is so important. Know that the Lord himself is God. It is he who made us and not we ourselves. We'll break that down in a minute. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name, for the Lord is good. His loving kindness is everlasting, his faithfulness to all generations. Now, you know how much I love the Message Bible. The Message Bible kind of breaks it down for us to understand. That's why I would tell you, if you don't have a Bible, you know, get you a, a New International Version or a King James. But get the Message, man. The Message just kind of throws it out to you. Listen to this. On your feet now, applaud God. Bring a gift of laughter. Some of you haven't laughed in so long. I was telling my pastor on the way here some of my problems, and he was belly laughing on the phone. And I thought, I'm so glad to make this gift in your life so good. <laughs> Sing yourselves into his presence. So when you get started, you're not there yet. you got to keep singing. Know this. God is God and God, God. He made us. We didn't make him. We're his people, his well-tended sheep. Enter with the password. Thank you. Everybody say thank you. Thank you. Say it again. The password of heaven is thank you. I don't know what the first two words you're going to say when you get to heaven, but it might be good for you to learn these two. Thank you. Amen. Come on in here. Make yourselves at home. Talk in praise. Thank him. Worship him. For God is sheer beauty. All generous in love, loyal always and forever. Because he's all that, we need to be responsible to the things we do and how we serve him. Responsibility, it means to be answerable. Being accountable for something deemed important. I believe worshiping God is important. I believe giving God thanks for life is very important. So we have a responsibility. So verse 1 says, shout joyfully to to the Lord. Well, Pastor, I'm 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 not I'm not an extrovert and a sanguine like you. I just can't do that. And yet I saw on social media you shouting when the Astros beat the Yankees. I saw you shouting when the Texans finally won a game over the Colts. You need to tell people to quit videoing you and exposing you when you tell me in church that you can't shout. When there's something better than the Astros winning, the Rockets winning, the Texans winning, Bama winning, LSU winning. There's something so much better than all that. Can I get an amen? Can I get a shout? 
There it is. Amen. Shout joyfully to the Lord. The Hebrew word means to raise a shout, to give a blast, to express approval. Amen. Yeah. It's that, it's that moment. It's that chest bump in heaven. If you could get up there with Jesus. Hey, Jesus. Hey, Jesus. You just want, you just want to chest bump the angels. That'd probably hurt, but you still want to do it. There are times God does things about which we cannot keep quiet. We can't shut up about it. He healed my body. He touched me financially. He got me out of this scrape. It was my fault. Bad choices. And yet here I stand. God has been so good to me. Can't help myself. Amen. The second responsibility, serve the Lord with gladness. Now, it's one thing to serve. It's one thing to have to go to work. But to do it with gladness. To do it with a smile. I'm going to tell you what. A raise is waiting for you. Blessings are on the way. When you look for good attitudes that have changed your world, when I see the right attitude, even in failure, amen, they get up and say, you know what, okay, I failed in that, I'm sorry, I messed up on the job here or that and the other. You know, I used to work for RC Cola back in the day. And there was one thing that you can't do to a carbonated drink. Drop it on its cap. And we'd be in a two-liter line, and you flip one of the things up too quick, that thing hit, and it go off like a rocket. <laughs> Through the plant, you'd be ducking and stuff. I seen a guy on a forklift, but y'all seen these little gifts or whatever they call them. On, on, what it hit, hits, a, I seen him putting drinks up and miss it. I'm talking as high as this building up, stacking bottled drinks and hit it, and all of a sudden they go down, and you hear that sound. How you gonna keep your job with a good attitude? <laughs> Amen. You, you got to serve the Lord with glad. A healthy sign of grateful life is serving. When, when, I, when my life is right, it's easy to serve. We serve God by serving others. You know, some people serve out of guilt. They just do it because they feel guilty to relieve themselves, to quiet their conscience. Some serve because they feel obligated or forced. And I hate doing that to people. I hate making folk feel, feel obligated or forced. But I don't want to manipulate them in it. I want to inspire people to do it. And I know if I serve, others serve. If I do something, they're going to do something. And that's why many hands make light work. And when I, this week, listen, for the last 60-something days out at the ranch, somebody has brought us lunch every day. Somebody's looked after us and, and taken care of. They serve us, and they smile when they come in. I haven't seen anybody come in and say, here's your sandwiches. <laughs> eat it. Be glad. I don't want to eat a sandwich that came from that. <laughs> Go ahead. Have, have out your soup. Yeah, I don't want to deal with that. I, I, want, I want gladness. I don't, I don't want to be like the, the, the young uh, Vietnamese boy during the, uh, the, the, uh, the Vietnam War where two soldiers were bunking in a place and they hired this young boy and they gave him a dollar a day to look after their stuff. He ironed their clothes. He, he, he watched after them. He, he, he washed the dishes. He cooked food for them. And then, and then one day they, the men started being mean to the little Vietnamese boy. And they, 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 so he would come in and he would touch the stove and there'd be grease on the stove knobs and his hands would slip across it. He pushed open the door, and the, the water, they had water buckets tied over the door, and the water bucket would fall on his head. It was like every time he turned around, they were doing something mean to him. So one day, the guys decided, you know, this is wrong. What we've been doing is wrong to this young boy. So we got to apologize to him because he's, he's had such a good attitude. He smiles all the time. He grins all the time. We put, we, we greased the, the thing there. He, 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 he just... Uh, he smiles about it. Water hits him on the head. He smiles about it. We put baby powder in his blow, dart, blow dryer. He smiles about it. Uh, you know how to try that. So, uh, <laughs> Justin, that ain't going to bother you, but it would hurt others. Uh, but, but, you know, so he just smiles all the time. So we don't know why he does it. And so finally they said, sir, young man, w forgive us for what we're doing to you. We apologize. And that little boy smiled. He said, oh, you apologize? He said, you mean no more grease on stove now? No more grease on stove. You mean no more water over the door? No, no, no more water over the door. You mean no more baby powder and blow dry? No more baby powder and blow dry. He smiled. He said, then no more spit in soup. <laughs> it may be that one way to tell if you are converted to Christ is to look at your motivation in doing whatever you do. Let me say that again. It may be that one way to tell if one is converted is to look at their motivation in doing what they do. Are you doing it for monetary gain? Are you doing it for your own glory? Are you doing it to make sure that you love others and you want to glorify God? This is why I'm doing what I do. The scripture says, are you writing that down? Somebody writing that down? 
Go back to it. Go back to that. They're trying to write. Corinthians tells us, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. I walk into a buffet. Thank you, Jesus. Why? Because Scripture says that. I fell off the wagon. It had been years since I had one. The other day, I had a Dr. Pepper. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> he was sugar. If you're a worker, work for the greatest boss in the world. Work for Jesus. Amen. The next one, next responsibility that I have, come before him with joyful singing. Sing with joy. In a world full of pessimism, you've got to smile. It says sing your way into his presence. Sing. Just keep on saying, well, pastor, you don't know how I sing. If we all sing, we can drown you out. Amen. So you just keep right on singing. Amen. You've got to dress up your testimony with a spirit of joy. There are people, I, I know you get nervous about singing, but in a congregation, the scripture tells congregations to sing. You can sing. That's why we put the words on the overhead, Ed. Smile at me, Ed. Okay. All right. This is why we sing. We sing. And, and I, I can put you in a vehicle, and you'll sing. You'll sing right along with a song. You go right on. You do that karaoke thing. Uh, karaoke It's really what it's actually called in Japan, but we're, we're such rednecks, we call it karaoke. Anyway, uh, it, it's imp just sing. Singing relieves pressure. There's something about just cutting loose with a song. Amen. Just, just sing. I was singing the other day. If I die before I wake, feed Jake. He's been a good dog. Now, this song doesn't make any spiritual sense to any of y'all. But if I go, please take care of my dogs. Amen. Response, I was trying to think of a spiritual song. I couldn't think of one. Isn't that terrible? The pastor can't think of one spiritual song. <laughs> know that the Lord, my responsibility is know that the Lord himself is God. The worst thing you can ever think to me is to think somehow you got here on your own. You're doing everything on your own. And that you don't need God. And that God didn't put you here with a purpose on time for a, a destiny to reach for and a legacy to fulfill. You've got to understand. Know that the Lord himself is God. I, 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 I see him. I have pictures of him in my imagination. But I still can't wrap my hands around him. And to know that Christ lives in me. It's still hard to wrap you that I am spirit, soul, and body. And if you've ever seen a body after the spirit's left, you understand that that's just a body. That's just an earth suit right there. But there's something living inside of you. Amen. Your intellect, your spirit, who you are. Know that the Lord is God. Acknowledge him. Say that. God is God. Amen. You know, and I know when we hear it around the world, it sounds inclusive. Amen. Everybody's got a God. You've you got to understand that if Jesus ain't connected with your God, he's the wrong God. It's just the bottom line. Know that he made us. Accept it. It's not evolution. I, it, there's no way I came from gas. You do understand that evolution teaches very simply that, that two gases bumped and there was an explosion and you showed up. Right, right. And then there was this, somehow there was a one-celled animal and then one day it grew legs and, and, and arms and hair under its arm and it cr crawled up out of the water. You understand, over millions of years, the, 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 the thing. I love when they date stuff. You know, that's 500 million years old. Well, can you give me the birth date of it? You know, I mean, I, science to me is so, sometimes, the, the Bible is full of science. The Bible teaches me the earth is round. He sets on the circle of the earth. Long before they discovered it was round, the Bible said it was round. Elephants didn't hold up the earth. Right. We've come a long way, but yet we regress with stupidity. And I'm not trying to be mean here. I'm just telling you, we keep regressing and going back and acting like somehow we came from monkeys. And I've seen monkeys. Why, why do we want to embarrass monkeys? <laughs> know that he made us. Accept that. Know that we are his sheep. He has authority over us. Next responsibility, enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. There's something we don't say here. We don't, we don't say it. The band understands it. 
But this is what we teach over and over to all, all our, our musicians for 20-something years. This one scripture. In it, this is the principle. This is the key to worship in this house. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. So we enter with thanksgiving. Our songs are always, if you catch them, are usually on the upbeat when we start. And then we go into the worship. It's biblical. Amen. We come in here, we give God thanks. And after we give him thanks, we give him praise. Amen. We tell him how, when you praise something, when you praise someone, you yell, you, you, it's almost like, go. Yeah, I, I love him. That's why I love him. When, when it's all, whether it be sports, whether it be, uh, in, uh, uh, you know, NASCAR, anything. You, you start praising something. You get, you get it. You shoot a doe. I haven't seen any of you men in here post a doe picture on Facebook. Huh? You ain't shot one. You still ain't gonna post it like that. I promise you ain't gonna hold deers up. And go. But you get this. All of a sudden, Hallelujah, Hallelujah! You'll be praising. You'll be excited. Now see that that dough for some reason that's just meat. Now that means something to me. That means something to me. Amen. But there's something about getting a set of horns. Amen. Being the post and say, hey, look, look what I did here. That big set All of a sudden, the praise kicks up just a little bit more. Listen, the, in Scripture, incense in the Old Testament was symbolic of prayer and worship. When you enter the Holy of Holies, they had incense burning. I'm from a generation that loved incense. Amen. Now, y'all might not be cool with incense. But we always had a stick or a cone of incense somewhere. Strawberry was my favorite. So it's always burnt. And, and then I get reading scripture about incense. And that incense, watch this. They often would slaughter the animals there in, in the Holy of Holies outside the gate. They would slaughter the animal to sacrifice unto the Lord. Now, if you know anything about death, it smells. And the only way to cover up death is incense. It's, it's a fragrance. Some of you, even this morning, like me, whoosh, whoosh. huh? You don't have to admit it, but you did it. You incensed yourself. Now, incense is so important because incense covers death. And in our lives, we're dying daily. We're dealing with, with this. The, the, Bob Dylan called it his dead man. Dead man, dead man. Oh, when you will rise. When you get born again, there's something old that's trying to hang on to you. And this new life of yours is coming out. But all of us come into church. Yesterday, when I, when I did that memorial service, I would dare say most of those folk, Miss Barbara probably don't go to church. Would I agree? So incense is so important. So we had in, there was incense in that place yesterday. I, I mean, I had so many people come up that they, they understood and caught the gospel. And we're going to see God bring a lot of them people to Jesus. And you agree with me? Amen. I can see that happening. I can see it all, all the time. But, but here, when you come to church, what are you doing? Oh, I, I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice to you. I love you, Jesus. Because the one next to me stinks. What you're doing is your incense goes before him and it's covering up the death in the room. You didn't know that, did you? That, that's why worship is so important. And, I, and I'm not picking on the one next to you like you do. But there's something about that fragrant odor. And I, there, there's something about incense. God gave you the ability to smell. And I know some of you Wives are disgusted about that with that husband of yours. But the truth of the matter is, I, I, took, I took some of the people with me from California on a motorcycle ride. Two, two things I realized that a lot of them had never done. Been on a bike, particularly a Harley, and never shot a gun. And, and so this one young lady, she said, Pastor, will you take me on a bike ride? I said, ask my wife. She asked Lori, and Lori said, yeah, you can, he can take you. So I took her on the ride. And she's like this. Her hands are out. And she's smiling. And she goes, Pastor, you smell that? I said, yeah. Smell like watermelon, don't it? Fresh cut grass. You never get that in a truck when your window rolled up. This is why dogs like to have their head out the window. <laughs> like, that's why I like to ride my Harley. You can smell fragrance. We, we ride through the flowers and uh, outside Fredericksburg. You smell. Oh, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. There's something about... God giving you this ability, you ought to thank God for the smell of turkey and dressing, <laughs> yeast rolls. Oh, Jesus loves me. 
Y'all get to go eat after this. I got to go preach again. <laughs> it's so important. Amen. The scripture says, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, our Lord's name is to be praised. There's something about praising him. So when you're worshiping in this house, understand, it's Bible. Oh, they're just trying to make me do it. You know, they're Pentecostal. No, we're not Pentecostal. We're not Charismatics. We're not Baptists. We're not Presbyterians. We're just believers in Christ trying to figure this thing out. Come on, Amen. And we all come from different backgrounds. You mean, many of you, if I ask you, you come from all different church backgrounds you were raised up in. I was, I was blessed. I, I didn't get to go into any of them coming up. But, but I do know this. When I worship God, I feel better. Amen. amen. When I worship God, when I thank Him for the day and what He's done for me. And, all, and it, it's not just Sunday. Amen. But through the week, you give Him praise. It's my responsibility. Everybody say, my responsibility. I got to do that. Give thanks to him. Amen. Make it personal, the scripture says. Remember, gratitude is rarer than faith. Uh, we'll talk about that maybe later on this week or something. Or you'll hear me say more about that. But gratitude is rarer than faith. Ten lepers get saved. Ten lepers get healed. Ten lepers cried out to Jesus and get well. Nine of them walk away well. One of them comes back and gives God thanks. One of them comes back and tells Jesus, thank you. Jesus said, where did the other nine go? Which tells me they had faith to get healed, Louisiana. But, watch this, but only one of them was appreciative of it. You can have faith. You can get, God will heal you in the hospital. You promise you. I, got, I promise you, if you'll heal me, I'll quit smoking. Oh, don't tell me you ain't done that. I'll quit this. I'll quit drinking. I, if you touch my body, I'll quit this. I was 16 years old. I had, had a ruptured right eardrum. Lost a hearing in my right ear from pneumonia. I'm laying in the hospital bed in the Colbert County, Helen Keller Hospital. And I told God, I'm 16. I don't know Jesus, but I know of him. So I said, Jesus, if you'll heal my ear, I'll quit smoking. 16. Bargaining with God. The doctor walked in and said, how you doing? I'm laying on my left side. I heard him out of my right ear. Healed my ear. The hole in my ear, that came, it all, the eardrum came back together. I heard it. Scared me to death. Because the first time in my life, I realized that God is listening to me. Mm. He even watches my texting. <laughs> he sees my emails. He heard me. I looked at that doctor. He said, son, your eardrum has come back together. It's a miracle. I said, ain't that penicillin something? Because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to give, I didn't know what to do. David, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to tell that God did this thing. But I promised him I'd quit smoking. That'd make him happy if I quit smoking. <laughs> Three months later, a girl broke up with me. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Tell the truth, shame the devil. Can I get an amen? Amen. Right. amen. You got to make it personal. Give thanks to him. Amen. There's somebody, remember that gratitude is so much rarer than faith. It, I can get healed, but can I thank him through the rest of my life? This thought always impacts me. Faith has to do with confidence. Thanks has to do with appreciation. I have an appreciation for him. I'm confident that God can do anything, but do I appreciate him? Ingratitude affects God. Psalm 106, verse 12. Then they believed his promises and sang his praise, but they soon forgot what he had done. Speaking of the children of Israel when it came out, you remember? They said, we don't like manna. We don't like this. We don't like that. We would like for you to do something else. God sent quail all the way up to their nose. It brought disease into their lives. He gave them what they asked for. Be careful what you pray for. God could give you what you've been praying for. You ought to thank God for unanswered prayers. I thought you'd fix and start playing. Thank God for unanswered prayers. <laughs> huh. In the desert, they gave into their craving. In the wasteland, they put God to the test. So he gave them what they asked for, but, they, but sent a wasting disease upon them. Then they believed his promises, sang his praise, but they soon forgot what he had done. Have you forgotten the children God blessed you with, the grandkids? How about those that just look at you and call you mom or dad or grandma or grandpa? Have you forgotten the blessings of a home with running water? You didn't have to go split the wood to put it on the stove to cook. 
You forgot how the old timers did it. My grandpa drunk coffee out of a saucer because it got so hot on the wood stove that the only way to cool it down was put it in a cup and tilt it in the saucer and he'd spin that coffee around like that. Let it cool down. Sip it out of a saucer. I ain't had to drink out of a saucer in 40 years. You give God praise. Thank you for all the good things that come your way. Romans 121, for all they, they knew God, they neither glorified him as God, nor gave thanks to him. But their thinking became futile, and their future hearts, foolish hearts, were darkened. Ingratitude affects us. The scripture says, do everything without complaining or arguing. Do everything without complaining or arguing. When you have ingratitude, when you're unthankful, it has a power to blind us from everything good and positive. Number two, has the power to turn us sour and indifferent. Next, the power to cloud our claim to be Christian. When I see people that aren't thankful, I think, do you really know God? Are you telling me you know Jesus? Because you sure ain't acting it right now. Amen. has the power to turn ours and others' lives into hell. When you live around unthankful people, you've been kind to them, you've been good to them, and they're not, they don't re- reciprocate that, it turns life into hell. I don't even want to live around that. Amen. Do everything without complaining or arguing. My responsibility, bless his name. Bless his name. Stand with me. Why am I going to bless his name? First, because he is good. And he is good all the time. Amen. Bless his name. Second, for his loving kindness. That word loving kindness. Go to the next slide, sis. That word loving kindness is mercy. Mercy. Keep rolling. There it is. Mercy. The Hebrew word is pleasant, agreeable, delightful. He is good. Loving kindness is everlasting. And his faithfulness to all generations. I'm praising him because I know he'll be here tomorrow. And when God takes this earth suit and I lay it down and I go on to be with him, I know God's going to be there for my children and my children's children. Amen. It'll keep reciprocating until Jesus comes again. I am thankful. It's the language of heaven. Thank you. Everybody say it. One more time. Thank you. Look at the one next to you and say it. Look at the other one on the other side and say it. Thank you for buying my lunch today. Thank you. Thank you. Learn the language. It opens doors. Let it be known that the little country church, that God is God and God reigns. Let it be known that this day that it is our responsibility as a people of God who love Him and are called by Him and are committed to serve Him with an attitude of thanksgiving. Let it also be known that we have come to this persuasion that no matter what the circumstances that surround us, our God reigns. He is ordering our steps, directing our paths, correcting our shortcomings, strengthening our weaknesses, righting our wrongs, and speaking our future. Thessalonians 5, 18, In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Pastor, what is the will of God? To give him thanks. Well, I've never lifted my hands in church before. Do you know, this is one of the signs of surrender. Do you know this breaks pride in our life? Do you know this tells us, the scripture says, lift our hands and bless the Lord. That somehow this blesses him. It's that that holding up. The promise that God, you're a good God. Could I get you to lift your hands? You're not obligated to. You're doing it because you love Him. Father, we bless your name this morning. We thank you for your goodness. We'll raise a shout in the house and give you praise for all good things come from you. We thank you for the air we breathe, the food we eat, for the people we hang out with. We thank you for the feelings of love, the emotions, the ability to breathe in and smell incense, God. We thank you to be able to taste the food and taste and know that you are good. God, you are a very, very, very good God. And we thank you that this day you reign in our lives. Forgive us of our sins. Roll over us. Remind us, Lord, God, throughout this week just how important you are to us. In Jesus' name and everyone said amen now raise a shout in this house
Oh, yes, you are. Yes, you are. Heads bowed for a brief moment, eyes closed. If you've been away from God, don't know Him at all, I just want to pray for you. And I, I know it sounds a little bit simple, but Christ has already done all the work. He did it all. And He said if we call on the name of the Lord, we'll be forgiven, that our lives will turn around, and then it's just up to you to live by faith, to serve Him and to give Him thanks. And watch how things turn around. I bet you put your hand up now and back down. Just real quick. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Hands all over the building again. Pray this with me. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my life. Live in me. Breathe in me. Walk through me. Touch through me. Give me compassion for those who have hurt me. Give me forgiveness for those who have trespassed against me. Set me free this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you believe that, give God one more praise. Amen. You may be seated for a brief moment as our servant leaders come up.